Alright, so hello viewers and welcome back to our let's play of To End All Wars. So, um, continuing forwards, it is now early February inside 1915, so let's see what has uh, happened so far. And more or less for my sake, we're doing a quick overview of the fronts. Um, starting off with the western front over here, would seem as though the, um, the French are occupying the same tile as we are over here so they're probably going to make another stab uh, at us and you know um in the entirety of the war so far we haven't actually checked oh uh, one thing i have to make i have to mention something about research but um uh, just before that checking over the fronts here um from the yeah from from the little you know elements bars over here we actually yeah we haven't suffered too many losses so far and that might just because of the uh, that yeah that might just be because of the automatic replacement system that you can enable inside the options here um technically what you're supposed to do is that you're supposed to use this system of uh buying um select elements and then like re and then uh letting the game automatically or redistribute them but i think i have that portion of the game just pretty much done and i think we've seen this before it's the replacement tab of this side man oh man would you look at that that is a lot of german infantry being built so um one thing that i wanted to talk about was that uh research system and some of the stuff it does it looks like yeah currently the um it's currently inside the colony colonies um in the indian ocean out of all places our ships are the the sms Königsberg is still alive and active it's um somehow evaded the uh the British fleet. Uh, either way, it's still buzzing about, and it seems to be making a few raids, so that's good. Um, anyhow, one of the things that I wanted to say was that um, just uh, just looking back at that research system, I checked over some elements of that, and oh, actually, both of us, both of France and us, have um, tier two chemical warfare uh, leveled up, but um, I got that part incorrect. Uh, it turns out what happens is that during this system, you can fund each and every single one of these things once every three to six months. Um, so you can you can fund them. I'm not really sure how it differentiates between like ones that require more time between funding uh, bits and ones that take less time. But if you notice the, uh, the top of my panel for cash, the state funds actually drop quite quickly when you fund a lot of things at once. I'm going to fund them all mostly because from what uh, the Western powers have, it looks like they're funding their, all of their stuff and we need to keep um, up with them so to not fall behind on the uh, the overall picture there. So we'll do that. Uh, next turn, we should have access to long-range submarines and afterwards we might get into the naval game. Um, but I think going forwards here, we'll just uh, really see what happens. So let's see what this is. Recognize the Bulgarian war goals is now um, available. So I guess this is a easy option to swindle um, Bulgaria into our forces. And I believe they are um, a regional power here. I believe they have a better army than, say, Greece, Romania in area. So they're not bad is uh, is the thing. We might be able to get them to join us. Either way, uh, reading over some of the stuff about them. So, in the aftermath of the Balkan Wars, Bulgaria found itself isolated, surrounded by hostile neighbors, and deprived of its support of the great powers. Initially, it declared neutrality, but as the war progressed, the central powers found themselves in a better position to fill their demands at the expense of the other Belgian or Bal Balkan powers. Belgian powers. That's right. So let's see. Um, we can recognize their goals here, which will move um, Bulgaria towards us, though it'll move Serbia, Romania, and Greece towards the uh, the other guys. So with that said, we sh that that might be, say, a bit of a calculated move. We could try to get Bulgaria over here to join us. That would combine the Ottoman Empire with, our, uh, with Austria inside one giant uh, railroad network, so that would be very helpful in in the event that um, we needed to do something with that. Um, 
I don't know if the combined powers of, say, the uh, the Romanians and the people down here, the yeah, the Albanians and the Greek, have enough to say outweigh our decisions on that. But that's um, that's one decision that we could try to fire off. We could see what happens with, though. Um, I think that is one of the things that you just, you just had to experiment with to understand how that um, how that overall that fits into the overarching camp pain. So I, I think we'll keep that as is for now. The main thing is that I wanted to shift a few armies here and like and I think we said last time we were going to try to surround these um, these guys into or the Serbian army into Nish, or at least cordon off a large portion of their army. So we'll see what we can do about that. I'm gonna get um, some of the uh, some of the reinforcements here to move up and to join some of the other forces here on the front and I guess we'll see what we can do about perhaps going south into Ibar and then across the river at uh, at one of these locations and we'll just see what we can do about squ squishing them into the corner of the map there so that's one thing um, that is this front we're just going to do a few cautious movements because there's honestly not too much we can do in the meantime we have second army all uh, nice and stuck inside one of the we're inside Minsk so they should be good and in the meantime I guess first army here could try to cautiously move forwards I'm really hesitant in moving forwards a large armies especially in the winter as I'm 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 under the impression that frankly there's like some sort of like just passive um like thing preventing large armies from moving about easily or easily yeah like that so either way we'll commit to those movements over here I want to yeah one of these forces to be garrisoned uh overall I find it easier to actually just drag and drop these guys into the towns than to um to give them the order to now at least or um yeah if they're if they're in the same tile of course if they if they're not I'd use the interstructure order so over here the Russian remnant forces are they're not bad they're not great mind you except for except for this troops threatening uh, von Hindenburg's army the rest we should be able to handle so uh, let's see we actually have we have cavalry and inf and infantry over here so I think we'll launch um, a bit of a side offensive coming from Thorn. Checking the weather. The, the weather. This place is muddy. It's a forested tile, so they'll have the defensive edge. But I'd prefer it if we um, committed to committed some like security missions to securing this area. So we'll do that, and we'll just see where that takes us over here. Let's check out some of the reinforcements. Not that I, th I think we. Uh, we have a lot of stuff built here, do we? We we have a few heavy artillery pieces built. In that case, we'll send them down here into, of course, the um, the western front because on the western front here, I think the artillery pieces are going to come in uh, in handy more so on the eastern front where a lot of movement happens. And with that said, these heavy pieces don't necessarily just uh, rather not don't aren't able to uh, really keep up with the movement. So send all the heavy guns here, and we'll concentrate them on that sector at the front where a lot of the combat seems to happen. So that care that takes care of the uh, the western front on those two ends. Bouncing over here to, let's see, I really need to, yeah, there we go, drop the guy into the fortress. Um, let's see what we can do about the push into the, uh, yeah, this area, Georgia and uh, the Caucasus. Um, so we have one Russian army over here. That one's kind of trapped. Last time we saw it had 600 some combat power. So that is probably one infantry core as opposed to just a regular unit and a supply unit. Uh, do we have any cavalry here? Yeah, we do. We have we have two units of cavalry. We'll send one forwards, and we'll see what we can find about um, moving upwards. And in the meantime, we'll see whether or not our our our, um, our commanders over here are active next turn on the push into Egypt and area yeah I think we'll just have to retreat here really the um, I don't want to commit I, yeah I don't want to commit enough troops here to make some sort of a, a real offensive because that would I, that would in my opinion sh um, weaken our defenses on the coastline which of course do deter the British from making a landing so overall that is this turn.
Okay, so on the French uh, front again at the Fortress of Metz. And well, you know how this is gonna go. Okay, so it's day one. Um, it looks like, yeah, they made an assault during that battle, so I guess they went uh, into point-blank range. And, ooh, yikes, this time they managed to get uh, really close. Well, yeah, very, uh, very close. We lost a lot of people that time, just slightly under their 40, 42,000 some. So, overall, don't know what to make of that. I guess they're, uh, well, I guess they're getting stronger. One thing that we do have to note during this battle is, of course, uh, the fact that the French here um, should have a technological advantage. They should have issued their guys some more um, equipment now that they have level 2 artillery and level one, uh, 2 infantry stuffs. So that's one thing to note. Um, we'll be bumping up shortly, so hopefully we'll have our bases covered, but at least uh, it's good to know that we have this um, buffer in our defense line which we'll be able to absorb some of this power. So I think I'll let the game go through and pick out our own plans here and just uh, let it do its thing. Okay, so day two, another battle developed, and that one ended in a close assault once again. So that was, uh, you know, just uh, in the trenches fighting there. And let's see, just gonna use the first some of the uh, the guys here as a as a sample but it looks like a lot of our guys had yeah they all had a had cover of course they all had decent aim they all had medium probability to aim a lot of them or had had uh, rather shot with deadly fire so that's good some of the devast some of the, yeah some of the artillery division were some of the field guns rather opened up quite nicely all of our guys were fairly well uh, supplied and in cover of course so they had uh, an extra bit of firepower and this time we started to whittle them down and we managed to do a quite a, a large amount of damage for what was lost gonna check whether or not we captured any people so we captured yeah right over yeah 600 so 6,000 almost 7,000 some people so that's not too bad and for elements rounded we actually had some people round so that's not too bad checking their supplies seeing whether or not anything happened there and let's see Okay, so some units went into the uh, the fortress, so that's that. And our trench keeps up. Oh, and they're gonna go for round three. So I'm gonna let them do it. Man, three days of combat right there, so all of the guys, or no, actually, some of them aren't exhausted, some of them are only fatigued, so that's not too bad. And this time, um, yeah, the MGs were involved, the MGs actually took casualties, so it's kind of impressive, I, I guess. Um, they were really, uh, yeah, up and in, in each other's uh, faces there. So, uh, lots of losses once again, lots of fatigued troops. And overall, the French should be beaten back, at least for some time. So, let's see what this is all about. For some reason, we lost to this small group of, uh, yeah, Russian soldiers here inside the uh, Ottoman Empire. This is, uh, area. I'm gonna tab through the results here. Is it, yeah, we committed, we committed more people than them. And instantaneously, our guys over here broke out. So, unfortunately, that's that. And would you look at that? Alright, so some victories over here inside Europe once again. So we're losing the uh, the colonial naval battles, of course. So, not really good, not really bad. I see their army over here fleeing to uh, Venograd or retreating over there. So that's kind of a good sign. At least our guys uh, holed up inside Warsaw would have uh, had a moment to rest now. Right, so let's see. I really hope that uh, during these 15 days the weather cleared up. And with the weather cleared, we should be able to resume some operations. Seeing as how some of our forces are now um, back and uh, cohesive and all. 
And no, the weather got worse actually. So I guess we had a brief uh, respite over there where yeah, there was there was a lot of mud, so there was definitely you know rain and all. So I guess uh, things refroze now. Is that the entirety of Europe? Um, it is at least the, the eastern front here. Let's see, France is fine, just below the front though. With the weather solidifying on this portion of the line. I don't think we'll have to worry about any more breakthroughs, especially with the recent casualties they've suffered. So that's kind of good. We'll need to shuttle some more uh, guys over here momentarily. But one thing that I should note is that as these battles grind forwards, the French are practically giving us free national morale at this point. I mean, right now, our national morale is, yeah, 115, one, one, one so definitely a lot of uh, morale there. Now inside this area, I'm gonna see whether or not we can rotate some more um, troops in. Oh, and would you look at that, I think our research advanced forwards one uh, tier. I'm gonna see whether or not there ha it has uh, the, the messages here regarding that. Seeing as how our units have a brand new card associated with them. So yeah, level two uh, infantry research, level two artillery research, and level two stuff in general. So that is nice. And I don't believe we saw any messages there about the use of gas. So I don't think they're using that. Um, let's see what else we can recognize. Italian war goals or not? We I think we've already we always had that um, thing. We might have not. And ooh, we get some special uh, people available now, so we can get another spy unit here, which is kind of cool. I think we already uh, tried to buy one of these um, people already. I don't know if that appeared or not just yet, but it was uh, I think either a Dutch or Belgian person, so it might have just appeared in a neutral a um, nation, which of course doesn't do too much for us. So let's check this out. Um, yeah, some of these special people will come up. Some of them are, are fairly well-known people. Some of them are just um, people or officers that will give you more research. I guess they were, they were some sort of an influential um, type of people. But some of them are actually pretty neat. Some of them are pretty famous, such as uh, Vladimir Lenin and Rasputin here. So I guess you can trigger the, uh, yeah, or rather, you can wait until the Russian Revolution occurs and you can send Vladimir uh, Lenin in there to stir the melting pot. And we should be able to trigger uh, Rasputin over here after the, the Tsar takes command. So when their morale drops below either 85 or 75. So that's good. Uh, let's see, what else? You know what, here's what we'll do. What's we'll happened here, we'll fire off this uh, Bolo Pasha unit. We'll see what happens with him. And we'll see where we gain him. So we'll have to take a, we'll have to watch out for his little message to pop up soon enough. But either way, that'll be good. Starting off with the Western Front this time, a lot of battles are being fed, fought in Mets. And with that said, I'm not terribly sure if that's a good thing or not. So, instead what I think I'll do here is that I'll get our, our uh, reinforcements for our newly uh, equipped forces, and I think I'll try to shore up their defenses by moving, say, perhaps Bay Corps, two Bay Corps over here to reinforce the, uh, the area coming from, of course, this area over here. I'm gonna check them if uh, I'm gonna yeah I'm going to check whether or not they have any artillery and I'm gonna attach that because we really do need some of the guns over there as well to shore up the defenses and now we get the uh, yeah the gas card here so what will happen is that when we play these in mass what will happen is that enemy units in the target region will have a 75 percent chance of suffering negative 33 percent cohesion plus 25 percent of uh, losing some health and some other things there. So it'll cost us uh, not really too costly, though it's um, yeah, it's definitely very deadly, especially if um, if we use it or if this is of course the first time that we use it. Um, speaking about that, I would consider the option of say launching a retaliatory attack and seeing whether or not we can probably break through their big army here. Um, but it doesn't look like we just, yeah, it doesn't look like we have enough combat potential to really do any damage there. We could, we try, we could try to, yeah, really bash that army with gas. Or alternatively, we could check some of the other regions as well to see what, um, what is perhaps a good use of that gas card. 
it, you know, it might not honestly be that bad to use it on, say, the the Serbians over here to gas them out. Seeing as how, um, yeah, the Austrian Hungarian troops just, they, you know, quite honestly, they're not having a lot of luck there, is uh, is the thing. So that's that might be one option that might not be. We'll see. And over here, I think we'll just get this army moving here, regardless of the weather. We'll see whether or not we can push them forwards here. We're making good progress overall. So that's good. Um, over here, some of those troops are being kept back. Second Army Corps can't move. Um, our Army Corps over here can actually commit to an offensive. So we see what they can do about launching an all-out attack on the people. Just another tile over. Actually, you know what? Make this a conservative attack because I don't know with what uh, rather how many troops are actually in that tile. So that will be that. Cavalry Corps and um, these guys switch over to the defensive posture. Actually, Cavalry Corps stays in the offensive one so that they, they can take military control of the area. And let's get these guys, who should be now fresh, to launch an attack towards the um, this army over here. Let's get them to do that. Check on Warsaw. Von Hindenburg's people is said. Yeah, they're said. They, it, it says that they're at full health. I'm not really sure if I believe that or not. Um, either way, we could use them for an attack here. So uh, with that said, I think we'll detach one unit we'll station them inside the fortress where uh there we go they're inside the fortress we'll keep them posted there as a bit of a guard and i'll get um von hindenburg's army to chase down that other one as best as they can so that's good over here they seem to be um moving for one of our fortresses with that said let's rotate third army over here for protection and we'll let them hold down the fort there um, checking over our replacements, we have two units being finished here. We have one unit on the front here, and something is nearly finishing over here, which I presume is another yeah, heavy artillery piece, which we'll send to the front here shortly. Um, actually, ooh, there's, this is only militiamen. Hmm. It would be absolutely devastating if we used gas on this large army over here, but um, I'm I'm thinking about how we could play it off. Is the thing. I guess what I could do here is that I could move. Um, yeah, this is going to be slightly risky, and the chances are is that if this doesn't work out, I'm honestly probably going to just reload the game. Let's get army. Uh, like let's, let's get uh, the vast majority of our army forces moving and assembled inside Metz for now. And then once they're assembled in Metz, um, we'll use chlorine gas. We'll be the first uh, nation to do this. And I'm thinking, should I play this card down right now, or should I wait? If I wait, next turn, when all of our armies are assembled, we can definitely come into an offensive, and we can definitely take the fight to these guys. But if I use it um, right now, it'll stall the attack, and I believe the ability will carry over. Seeing as how there's no way they can recover that much cohesion in just the, uh, the first few bits of time. Hmm. Let's see. I guess we'll see what happens on the other fronts here to determine that. So some of our, well, no, one of our army groups over here are ready, so that's not going to cut it for a, for an offensive. Over here, these guys got yeah, oddly smashed up trying to enter that tile. For whatever reason, it's weird. Try to, we'll try it again. We'll see whether or not they can do anything. Over here, our borders are secured. Uh, I think we'll go with gas first. I think we'll be the first nation to use it. So, um, let's get chlorine gas. And let's pour it on the French uh, main army in, uh, yeah, Saint, whatever portion there. One of the things that I, um, a lot of people say that the uh, whoever used gas first in World War One did wrong was that the, or rather, I think it was the Germans who used gas first, was that they only used it on a small portion of the front. Um, as a bit of a test, if they used it in mass, that that would have been quite a 
quite a good option to just you know pour it down along the front um, instead of just using it in one small area at the start because then you of course capitalize on the element of surprise there but I think we'll just commit to um, yeah I guess the game only allows us to use one uh, one of these regional decision cards for gas so we'll pour it there we'll see what happens and hopefully next turn we'll be able to drive the French back not only back but hopefully back across the river here um, shortly <clears throat> okay, so welcome back. It looks like uh, Pavel Pehev over here makes an appearance once again. And we are apparently attacking, or, or no, we're, we're apparently fighting him in Brest Lutovisk, so he has come out of his fortress. So, uh, ooh, actually, we get a few new defensive plans as well here. We get um, the static defense deployment here. This battle will make use of a lower number of reserve forces during the battle, so that's really neat. Um, let's see, we can do prepare... Oh, uh, actually, we haven't shown you guys these uh, little briefings yet. So we can prepare to withdraw as well. We could try to retreat as much as possible. We could harass enemies' uh, deployments. I'm not really sure what this does, to be frank. Um, this one makes more sense if they use a strong center plan. I, I would imagine that the strong flanks counter them, and likewise, there's some balance over there. Um, so you guys have a total of one and all. I'm gonna say that uh, perhaps a static defense might work, and seeing as how the Russian army at this point probably has just um, just infantry, I'm gonna see what we can do about this one to use forward machine gun emplacements, and we'll see. Um, they should be attacking us in this battle. Yeah, the little icon is uh, defensive for us, so they'll. Sh uh, hopefully charge into these machine guns. Well, um, I think, yeah, we failed the planning phase. So we did uh, static defense deployment first, and that was successful, but the machine guns, I don't know how they messed that up, it, it just wasn't enacted. And then we switched to a balanced deployment. They went for a cavalry breakthrough, despite the fact that they didn't have any cavalry. I'm not really sure if they were now, they had a slight amount of cavalry. So, <laughs> I don't know what happens there, or rather, I don't even know why you should be able to use the cavalry breakthrough if you don't have very much um, cavalry to begin with, seeing as how that would, like, they would imply that they sent in exactly, like, barely not even a tenth of their force to to do uh yeah damage to us we won a nice victory and hopefully this will push um yeah the uh the defenders over here back into the into the fortress of brest lutovisk so then we can uh, have the chance of destroying them in their entirety and oh no pavel radenkov over here is leading a small army they managed to um apparently destroy one of our undefended airfields okay so they made an appearance over here. And they did something over there. Alright, so some very odd things happen on the front there. Oh. And now we weren't able to get into this mountain pass region, so I guess we'll wait until they uh, they run out of, they run out of supplies before trying anything further. So I want to see what the uh, the results of the gas attack was. Because it uh, it seemed to have worked pretty well, the entirety of that French force seemed to to total up to three hundred or yeah three hundred some points of power. So that has definitely gone very well. On the eastern front, we're going to have to catch, uh, yeah, Renenkov. But apart from that, we'll see. Right, so uh, some fortresses were hit. Yeah, chlorine gas was first used over here. And that should have been poured onto the, the French army over here. So let's see. Ah, uh, great, I think I'll have to dig through all of these unit cards to figure out uh, where now. We could just check over here. They are actually providing an abysmal amount of supply. They're pl they, yeah, they're providing 26 points whereas they need 83 and currently I believe the uh, the actual like numbering so for example the uh, the 94 out of 94 on the 5th infantry division I believe that's actually the cohesion as opposed to the um, the health of the guys so if we check these guys over here actually they're they're slightly over their cohesive amount so I think they're ready for an offensive and seeing as how we have so many of our um, troops over here 
I think we'll make an attack on the uh, the 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 Western the, the French forces here. And with that said, I'll see who I can switch onto the offensive uh, onto the offensive posture here to do exactly that. I believe the rest of the guys, seeing as though they're inside the same tile, they'll they'll help out nonetheless. But the guys who aren't activated just yet will suffer a penalty for their offensive actions. So we'll commit to something. We'll see whether or not we can um, go on the offensive here and launch a counterattack now that we've um, fired off gas on the western front. Over here, uh, what should we do about his force? He is actually, he managed to recover the vast majority of his force and he uh, he's making a move into the back territories of our of our force now I guess what we'll do here is that I'll send um, cavalry and army corps to chase him and I'll see whether or not we can just um, shore up the defenses behind him to trap him in at Brest Ludovisk we'll commit we'll com well yeah we'll commit to an assault and inside this area, I'm going to get this force to pull back to Bellostock to re to um, to heal up. And we'll see Pavel's forces doing their thing. And the weather is getting better. It's going back to mud now. So it's not, you know, the greatest, but it's not the worst. So at least that's good. This force should be ready to move forwards slightly and we'll just continue pushing. Likewise, over here, we will begin pushing once more. We'll see whether or not we can make a over-river attack here. And the cavalry has arrived, so that's good too. Because now we can shuffle these guys uh, forwards a few tiles, and we'll see whether or not we can um, send them forwards like that for the purposes of uh, turning these tiles from the Russian-held military control to ours. And let's see, once we enter this town right here, it's not gonna be. Uh, actually, it's it's still a far. It's uh, it's actually pretty even coming going from Moscow uh, and to Petrograd over here. Moscow is slightly shorter, but um, Petrograd is the key to taking out the uh, the forts there. So we'll see what we can do about um, doing some damage there. Overall, this fortress should be taken. Um, Warsaw is already taken, so we don't have to worry about that. Though these guys haven't made any movements outside of uh, Warsaw just yet. Yeah, that's kind of weird. In that case, I think I'll get them to... Yeah, this is the odd thing about the game. Units, in my opinion, suffer an ungodly amount of cohesive damage just from doing very basic moves here. So I guess we'll get them to go back into the fortress. We'll get them to go back and to... Uh, to get their guys ready once more over here they've uh, the russians have moved towards some of our fortress towns not so much in other regions so we'll let them be for now and over here inside the uh, the regions of serbia let's see first three attacks will also be quite devastating our army groups are they should be kind of ready yeah they're kind of ready they're not perfectly uh, up to snuff but they're not bad in this case, I think what I'll do here is I'll get uh, one of the forces, this force over here. I'll get them to make a major attack. I'll get them to smash through here. I'm going to see whether or not we can sandwich these guys in, close this trap further, and um, see what we can do to play them down from there. This force says that they're at half strength, whereas in reality, they seem to be fine. So that's good. And as you can see, all of the uh, all of the little troop cards update update over time, so it's quite neat. Um, so yeah, one stab over here, and then we'll swing over. Not much else going on in the front actually, so I think that'll be this turn too. Okay, so starting off with the battle at Metz, with an overwhelming amount of force power, we have, yeah, we have a lot, wow, 3,000 some gone up against 1,000 some in a grind core battle here. So I guess it's uh, indeed wave assault time. It's a clear day, it's a nice day for an offensive, as best as uh, there can be, really. So let's see what we can do about uh, this force over here. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, that is not a good day for them. They lost 60, almost 60,000. Then, then again, oh, we suffered quite the few losses as well. Though I'd say that, yeah, we didn't lose any army corps, nor did we lose any, uh, yeah, no infantrymen. 
So that's good. Overall, that is that, yeah, that is one pretty major defeat for them. They lost an entire unit, so that's not bad. They lost a colonial unit, so that's that. Right, so that's almost uh, Brest Lutovisk taken. I'd imagine that the core leader here died, not the core once again. Though it uh, might be a possibility. Over here, we're fighting on the snow uh, this time. And again, odd power ratings. Over here we have an estimated power of 270, whereas the game says in this tile we only have 170. The Jacid uh, forces don't seem to have too much power either. So yeah, there seems to be a lot of inconsistency with that actually. Either way... Mm -hmm. Oh, the, another thing I did was that I, I queued a, uh, a Turkish advance over here to see whether or not we could probe in there. And I guess that worked out. So, well, things are looking pretty good on the front. Um, that is another turn finished, so I'd imagine there's another round of messages here. Some of them will be just more or less these generic support for the war is decreasing messages, as we've seen before. Um, those are, of course, just a model of the war extraction as time goes on. I noticed a few things about the, uh, the political... Um, area over there, the diplomatic system that we need to keep track of. Um, so we'll bound there shortly for this turn, and I think we'll just call it a day for uh, this video. So let's see. Um, so for support for the war is decreasing in Serbia, so that's pretty good. Um, war exhaustion is going higher there, and of course they lost their capital there. Um, let's see, a lot of bad weather stuff happened. That stuff is actually more or less so important. Um, is there anywhere that the wars, uh, where war support is increasing? Evidently not. Managed to get another one thing here as well. What is this? Uh, let's see. For whatever reason, Italy moves closer to the Triple Entente, so that is also one thing that we need to note. Um, one thing, yeah, one thing that we need to try to do here is that we need to keep them out of the war. And with that said, they haven't joined up with the, uh, or let's see. I don't believe they've joined up with the um, the Western powers just yet, but we want to consider um, the possibility of an Italian ally there, seeing as how in this in this start we're yeah in this this position here the Italian alignment is very very high compared to what uh, yeah the the Western powers have here. So one of the things that we can do here is that we can fire off the concessions to Italy. It'll move them towards us to a great degree, though it will cost us a few provinces and a lot of national um, morale and uh, victory points there. So uh, let's see. Checking over the nations for, um, briefly here. Rebel forces will start to build up inside these countries now that the, uh, the support for the war is decreasing. France and Russia have 5% I believe Germany is slightly higher at 35% and I believe that's just one of the penalties to our game start. Um, Austria here is still pretty minor, though it's actually very, very high in Great Britain at 53 here for whatever reason. So they're, um, they're doing that. They, uh, yeah, they, they might actually exit out of the war, which would be nice. Currently, they seem to be um, quelling uh, un un industrial unrest and strikes, so they seem to be having, um, yeah, some problems over here with uh, some of their stuff. And it also costs victory points to play that card, so that'll help us out. So, um, yeah, they're doing, they're not doing too well. Hopefully, they'll get out of the war. The United States seems to be slowly shifting over to their side, but for now they're neutral. Ottoman Empire is again at that uh, modest 5%, which seems to be the standard of all of the other countries, so that's um, not that bad. Bulgaria actually over here has a has a pretty good chance of joining us without us um, needing to recognize their war goals, but we might do that anyways just to, uh, just to guarantee them entry in the coming bits here. We're uh, we're we're making it. We're, we're rather we're keeping um, Romania out of the war here for the most part. 
Denmark and Greece here at the war with our diplomats, though from the looks of it, Greece has a likely chance of rather a good chance of staying out of the war, but Romania, however, does not. And I think Albania might be here. They, they might not be. No, they're actually not here, so I don't know with them. So I think that is overall the stance in the world for now. Next turn, I guess we'll make a few movements, and uh, we're at, yeah, next yeah next episode. I mean, we'll make a few movements, and for now it is oh no, not another period of uh, we're actually no, there's some there's some snow. No, this is the uh, the region the the, um, the tile the uh, the terrain type of uh, outlook. We'll switch it over to the. Um, yeah, the weather outlook over here, and it looks like it's still snowing inside Prussia and area. Though it's starting to convert back to mud, and hopefully it will start to clear up soon. And overall, I mean, there's bits of good weather now. It's so actually, yeah, there's some good weather along the front over here too. So that's that. Um, I guess we'll just finish off the uh, the video on this note, or actually no, we'll check over the victory screen here briefly, and afterwards I think we'll leave. Um, one thing that I wanted to note here was just the fact that we seem to be winning very well on the western front now, now that uh, we have their morale at 80. And on the eastern front, oddly enough, they seem to be putting up the most fight at uh, 92 points. If they were at that 80 point, um, I would be much happier, but this works for us. One thing that we should note just um, for right now is the losses they seem to have taken. Yeah, they have taken way more than us. The other thing is that um, at the end of the game, the victory total, the, v the VP, the victory point totals for the Western powers and the Eastern powers here are combined. So technically, they um, they actually have a lead on us right now. But if we're able to shut down uh, Russia, I think we'll be uh, I think we'll be good going out there. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Be back next time. Time.